Going back to home. Uh, so there's other things you could do. Like if we have an upcoming event, like we had Sean Olive here a little bit ago. Mm -hmm. um, it's the type of thing where he'd call out and we'd announce when he was going to do it. Our next event will probably be in May when uh, Miri Ben Ari is going to put on a little concert for us here in the store. And uh, lastly, if you want to look at our history, you could then literally scroll through it, find the thing you want to learn more about, go into it, hit the plus button, and it'll just tell you a little bit more. Okay. Okay? So, and then you can interact with it in four different ways, okay. right? So I, I can't be the only person here with a bunch of us to do it, right? All right. On the very back of the digital board is the Harmon timeline. So all the salient uh, dates in our history record here. So after all the brands go through, mm -hmm. it'll begin a timeline. It's looping through as we're speaking, and then actually as we step back and walk through the store, we can turn back around and we can see it uh, okay. scrolling through. All right. Sam, we keep all of our legacy pieces out here. So, you know, uh, Century Gold, 1996, uh, we have the speaker here for people to come in and say, oh, you know, I have one of those in my house. Um, you know, we have the Citation and Festival product out here. JBL Vertex Arrays hanging from the ceiling, and these are the same speakers that would be like a Madison Square Garden or Yankees um, Yankee Stadium. Um, we've got uh, Martin Lighting up here. Not that we sell either the Vertex Arrays or Martin Lighting, but we'd like to represent the professional product. Mm -hmm. And in front of this big screen right here is where we generally set up a stage. So we had Miguel here, we had DJ Cassidy. Oh, okay. We had some artists come in here, we removed these. These pedestals here, where you could also sit here and sort of get that same sort of experience you had at the Spider, where mm -hmm. you could select a song and listen to it. But we can remove this and set up a stage here, and generally we'll have speakers left and right, okay. so we can really make the floor thump. You know, the Studer board its specialty is making things loud. Studer, um, Vienna, Switzerland, where it originally orig uh, origi originated, uh, is now an English brand. So it's the same board that recorded the Beatles. Um, Sgt. Pepper uh, album in 1967 mm -hmm. and it got sort of famous for that that a lot of industry standards use it so ABC, NBC, BBC all use the studio board. And these are M5 speakers here. So if you want to go to Pretty heavy. Don't even try it. It'll close itself. <laughs> well, the door weighs 450 pounds when it closes. Now, you remember we're leaving all that ambient noise and mm -hmm. all of a sudden, going to silence. Wow. Pretty quiet here. Uh -huh. right? And that's because the walls are acoustically treated to absorb some of the higher frequencies. Mm -hmm. So in this room, we can then do sort of a shootout. So we've got our Bluetooth product here. Let me just get one of these turned on. So you could listen to it here. Water product, you can hear how it's having compared to the competitors. And this is one of, a very unique experience to be in here 
and be able to do this mm -hmm. uh, because there's really nothing like this anywhere else. You'll see these products out in Best Buy, but you can't hear them compare it to one another right. in a quiet environment. And you can do the same thing with a headphone or a soundbar. Only plays for about 30 seconds. <laughs> So, uh, but it, it'll it'll keep flying for that thirty seconds. So I'm sorry I have to talk over it a little bit. So, what are the models that you're comparing? The that's this is the SB twenty six. Right. This right? is the SB twenty six. This is the Klipsch Icon, um, and this is the Sonos Play Bar. Oh, okay. And what are the headphones against the Synchros S700? You know, we have the Beats Studio, um, the Bowers P5, and the uh, S700. Okay, gotcha. Right? Compared to one another. Okay. As a matter of fact, you can. this is a self-driven demo, so you can try those headphones on and take a listen. Um, all right, let's do that. Come back to this. Uh, and I got um, some people coming back for lunch. I'm trying to keep an eye on everything. So, over here is our BDS area. We have both the BDS and the Saber up. Mm -hmm. So for those people that are interested in home theater, we can give a taste of what we have here and then be able to bring them downstairs and give them a full demonstration with Mark Levinson and JBL Synthesis. Okay. So this is just a kind of a quick tour of the top. You know, a lot of it is sort of retail specific. So, you know, these first three tables are generally considered um, the tertiary window, so as people come in, it's where you want to put your most featured product mm -hmm. for them to see. And this actually has something to do with your report. Okay. So the top selling SKUs in the store, would you believe me if I told you that they're Soho and Pulse? Because they're in the window, right? So we can make other items our items. Andre, do you remember Catalina? So we're going to give you a, a quick uh, tour in the Mark Levinson room. Kevin's going to give you a demo, and then we'll take you into the JBL synthesis room, and you can hear that as well. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. So you're out of Northridge? Mm -hmm. So this is our Mark Levinson and Rebel mm -hmm. uh, room, and we think this is like the best uh, system we have at the store. Um, it's, an, it's the reference system by Mark Levinson. Um, a little bit of history. Mark Levinson actually was a musician. He uh, played a lot of uh, upright bass and trumpet. He, one of the things he noticed when he was like uh, being a musician and he got uh, really successful, one, thing, one of the things he noticed was that he, when they were recording a, uh, a session in the recording studio and they went to listen to it after they finished recording, he noticed the room that they played in didn't sound, the music didn't sound the same as when they listened back to it. And uh, that was something of a problem to him. So he used some of his engineering techno uh, uh, technology um, st uh, studies that he, he learned in the, uh, in the past and kind of decided he wanted to make a, an amplifier company or an amplifier that actually can perform that task, mm -hmm. make it sound real. Um, so he did actually in 1972. And then uh, in 1984, we actually acquired Mark Levinson because it's actually the heart line of uh, Harman Kardon, or Harman International is really with the Harman Kardon. In like 1953, we started making amplifiers. So we kind of admired his company and we wanted to utilize some of the technology that he created and also uh, improve upon it. And then we paired this system up with the Rebel Salon 2s. And Rebel's a company that was um, created in 1995. It actually uh, was really because of Mark Levinson the, uh, being, uh, being acquired by Harman that we decided we wanted to make a, a new type of uh, loudspeaker because we found that most of the loudspeakers that were on the market didn't really do the system justice. Mm -hmm. So we... Um, you know, in 1985, we started building them. And this is the second series of this type of uh, speaker. This is the Salon 2. Um, we have also a performance series, which is actually on, outside of this room. It's on uh, what we call the Sound Bunker. Okay. But if I can play just one clip, um, 
It's actually a, uh, a song by Ricky Lee Jones, and the reason why I like to play this song is because it has a lot of dynamic mm -hmm. built to it. So it starts off with one instrument and eventually becomes a whole band. Okay. So it starts off with an upright bass, and you can hear like the fingers sliding across the fretboard or the strings. Then Ricky Lee Jones comes in pretty shortly thereafter, like right here in dead center, mm -hmm. and she sounds like she's singing right in the room. And she'll be accompanied by acoustic guitar. And what's interesting about this song is every time an instrument comes in, it has its own spot, and you can really s almost like see where that spot is. But but the uh, but what's really nice about it is they uh, they sound extremely real. Okay. They almost sound like they're playing in the room. listening to. Mm -hmm. um, this was just a, a regular CD playing to the Mark Levinson CD player. Okay. And then it went to the preamplifier and I always consider this just to be like the brains of the the unit because it kind of it's volume control but it also controls input. Mm -hmm. And what's really nice about this this uh, preamplifier is it actually is designed to uh, clean power. So it's uh, so really the idea is to be less destructive as possible. Mm -hmm. So it's this CD, like the music that's on the CD is as best as it's ever going to get. Mm -hmm. The idea is to make it stay that way. Okay. Um, and this does an amazing job at doing that. Then it goes to the amplifiers. There's two of them. So we have one that's powering this speaker, and one that's powering that, that speaker. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Actually, this is what I... About the speaker lounge. Mm -hmm. So with here, with here we have our Revel. We call this like the Revel wall, although we do have JBL uh, speakers here, and these are what's called the LS series. Mm -hmm. um, but what's cool about this store I, versus a lot of like hi fi or other places, you can actually play any of these speakers. Okay. Um, you can a selection of songs, so you can play and you can learn a lot of information about them by just hitting like the more button. But you can also choose a song and adjust the volume. So if you wanted to listen to something that was jazz. So right now, I believe we're playing out of the F-108s, or F-208s, I'm sorry. If I wanted to change it to the bookshelf over there, I can. I really think it's cool because you can get like a first introduction listen to it mm -hmm. versus uh, there's a, lot, a lot of places I've been to you have to actually hook it up to another amplifier right. and switch the speakers out. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. We also do that with the JBL. The, we have the, the studio series on this wall. And over here we have uh, JBL Synthesis. Okay.
The um, this room we have this room in here because it uh, shows what JBL is capable of for home theaters. Okay. Um, in fact, a little bit of history. Uh, JBL is kind of one of the first players in uh, movie audio, um, and they and it kind of has like a little bit of an echo coming up today, where like seventy percent of the theaters in America use JBL for the most part, and so in the early nineties. The uh, JBL decided they wanted to start making a home theater experience. It was actually better than going to a movie theater. Mm -hmm. And they kind of designed what is called the synthesis or JBL. And each JBL room is uh, perfectly EQ'd and perfectly designed for that system. Okay. Would you like to watch a club? Sure. Yeah, what's really nice is you can sit anywhere because the, the room is actually EQ'd for each uh, seat. Very nice. Yeah. You can hear like the sound of the music and everything so clearly. Mm hmm. I almost we, felt like I was in a movie theater. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the, kind of the point, you know. It's, but actually, what makes it amazing is that you can be in the comfort of your own home. Mm hmm. We have to show you what we're running speaker wise. Okay. Is um, we're running what's called the JBL K2. Okay. They're the second largest in the line. The largest would be the Everest. Mm hmm. And the Everest, or it's supposed to be like sort of like the Everest is the largest mountain in the world. K2 is the second largest. Okay. So it's the second largest speaker. Uh huh. Um, and to let you know, the Everest is sort of like this, but with another one of these speakers right. on the side. Right. And we have three of them in the front. We have four subwoofers. Okay. There's large speakers right back in the corner. We have one in each corner. Mm -hmm. And then we have three JBL speakers in the wall oh, on each okay. side. Interesting. This is meant to represent uh, what an anechoic chamber would be, like if I went to Northridge. Mm -hmm. But it's part of the structure of the store where the back wall, they're capacitors. So they're almost like little battery shells. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're there to kind of help re represent the science of sound as well. These uh, headphones in here, these were uh, designed for Mariano Rivera with the entire Yankees. Okay. And you could purchase these headphones, as a matter of fact, for only $10,000. Oh, and uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and fifty percent of the purchase will go to um, feed city media wheels okay. and be feeding New Yorkers. Okay. And that mosaic you see down there that was designed for Mariano Rivera as a contest. And each one of the littler pictures in there is a picture of some fans. Mm -hmm. And they compile them all together to make a, a Mo mosaic. They, they often refer to Mariano Rivera as Mo. Okay. So it's uh, a mosaic. Oh, uh, interesting. Uh, this doesn't have a 